and after he'd beat me, the bruises would appear. Some worse than others, less faint, more obvious, their colours, shapes and sizes, all determined by his mood. Mostly, he'd be careful not to put them in places where I couldn't cover them up. Usually, like, body shots and kicks. All dependent on his ability to retain restraint enough. But sometimes, you know, he'd get so angry with me that he just, he couldn't control himself and, and then his attacks became less tactical. And then every punch would become more spiteful than the last and then he'd be lashing out in such an indiscriminate rage that he'd forget to avoid my face. And when that happened, it prevent me from leaving the house for days, sometimes weeks. And then I'd have to phone in to work with some fake illness or make excuses not to see our family and friends and till that is, the bruises had faded or that I could adequately cover them up with makeup. And if by chance anyone did notice, then he'd covered that up too. Because for days before he'd lift lockdown, he'd be drilling into me some exactly what the story was. Some structured tales of my own stupidity. And I'd deliver his words like some well-rehearsed actress nailing his script word for word. Honestly, what a performance we'd give to our audience. We were one hell of a double act. <laughs> She's so clumsy, he'd say. You just, you just can't take her anywhere. And they'd eat it up, you know, like, like he was one of those charming hypnotists that you see on TV. They were seduced by him in the, those moments. <laughs> Me too. He was just always so convincing. And then they'd laugh. And I'd find myself feeling compelled to join them in what was this innocent and embarrassed giggle. <laughs> I'd mastered that through years of practice. It was a laugh that conveyed to everyone who was listening, that he was so right. I, and I really did tend to fall over myself sometimes or walk into things because my eyesight had never really been that great. Oh, it's just who I am, I'd tell them. And they'd accept it with smiles. <laughs> I mean, to them, well, it was more cute than anything else. Not that I look back and blame them, I, c I can't. After all, me and him were the perfect couple. You know, I used to get the impression that some of the women that we knew actually envied me. <laughs> my Sally this, my Sally that. Our friends and family, <laughs> they used to tease him about it, like his love was, for me was so pathetically great that they'd mock because to them, he was obsessed with me. But in no way would he ever be obsessive. Not Brian. No, Brian's a a great guy. Brian's the best of guys. Never in a million years would Brian ever lift his hand to a woman or 
raise his voice or definitely not hit a woman, demean a woman, hate a woman. I do. I do feel safe now. I guess it's, it's just been a weird week, you know. I, it's been, no, 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 no water for me. I'm fine, thanks. I just, I'm just a bit tired. I'm just a bit confused. Because if he didn't go too far with me on Saturday, if I didn't end up in hospital, and if my sister hadn't walked through that door, and the sheer horror on her face when she saw me, then I'd never be here sat with you. Because I never knew places like this existed. Or that someone like you would be willing to be willing to help someone like me. And, well, because the truth is, for some reason, and I can't explain to you what that reason is, but I never realised that I had a choice of leaving him 